Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is an asymptomatic young lady who had a chest x-ray done to renew her work license. The chest x-ray showed a left paravertebral shadow. CT was ordered to clarify this abnormality and here uh, we see side by side the chest x-ray and the scanogram of the CT. The quiz is how to explain the striking differences between the two images. In the first image, the chest x-ray, there is a left paravertebral shadow and nothing in the mediastinum. And in the second, the scanogram, the paravertebral abnormality is less obvious and there is a new abnormality of the mediastinum. The difference in time is just a few days. So uh, if in the first image we have something down and nothing up, and in the second image we have something up and nothing down, then the most simplistic explanation is that the opacity has moved from down up. This sounds funny, but it is true. It is a case of inferior vena cava obstruction with collaterals. The chest x-ray has been done in the upright position and the CT self-evidently uh, in the supine position. Blood within the venous collaterals around the spine has been uh, struggling to reach the azygous vein in the upright position but couldn't make it fully against gravity and had to stagnate at the left paravertebral region forming the dense shadow there. On the other hand, in the supine position of the CT, blood moved easily from the paraspinal collaterals to the azygous vein, shifting the stagnation and the distension to the mediastine. So this is the opacity here of the azygous vein and this is the site of the opacity which has been bigger on the chest x-ray. So let us have a quick look at the collaterals. These are the collateral veins at the axilla. and the dilated internal thoracic veins. And the collaterals within the spinal canal and the hemiazygous system. This is how the collaterals look like on the skin surface on this volume rendered uh, images of the CT of the chest. On making the skin more transparent, we appreciate the collaterals better. And this is how the collaterals look like inside the body we can see the heavy collaterals in the upper part of the abdomen and the markedly dilated azygous vein leading to the superior vena cava. Now this is a diagrammatic representation of the liver to help us understand the situation and answer two important questions. First, what is the cause of the obstruction of the inferior vena cava? And the second is, where is the exact level of obstruction? Answer to the first question, the cause of obstruction is a congenital membrane at the upper end of the inferior vena cava. How do we know that? The contrast agent within the right atrium will be resting here on the superior surface of the membrane and the dissection within the right atrium 
will look like this. Now we are moving one level down and here we see a very characteristic and very important sign of membranous occlusion of the inferior vena cava. The sign is a very sharply defined oval of contrast agent. below which you see no contrast agent in the inferior vena cava. So this sharp demarcation between the enhanced blood superior to the membrane and the unenhanced blood inferior to the membrane is quite the diagnostic of membranous inferior vena cava obstruction. And here we come to the answer of the second question also. The level of obstruction is entirely superior to the three hepatic veins which are seen here very thin and devoid of contrast agent. It makes a great difference if the obstruction is superior to the hepatic veins or inferior to them. The next important feature in this case is the retrograde flow in the portal vein due to arterioportal shunting most of the time within benign nodules or malignant neoplasms. How do we recognize arterioportal shunting on the images? By the early appearance of very dense contrast agent in the portal vein. Going down, we notice that the splenic vein and its confluence with the superior mesenteric vein contain less dense contrast agent than the portal vein. And this is a practical impossibility if the direction of flow in the portal vein is normal. And going up, we see the dense and thin right portal vein, as dense as the hepatic artery and the thin and the dense left portal vein. And we can trace the source of the arterioportal shunting to a group of focal lesions at the tip of segment two. This is the segmental portal branch to segment two. And we see two focal liver lesions or three in fact focal liver lesions at the tip of segment two and the segmental branch of the left portal vein to segment two can be traced to reach the lesions The retrograde portal vein flow and the arterioportal shunting at the lesions is very well demonstrated on this coronal thin maximal intensity projections. And here we appreciate the difference in CT density of the contrast agent in the portal vein and the contrast agent in the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein which tells us for sure that we are dealing here with retrograde flow in the portal vein. Now, what happens to the hepatic veins? Blood comes from the hepatic artery, goes to the sinusoids, and from there to the hepatic veins. It tries to go up, but the membrane is there, so it goes down. So here we have also retrograde flow of the blood in the retrohepatic and infrahepatic parts of the inferior vena cava. How do we recognize this on imaging? Here is the left renal vein, and you see that the contrast coming from the left renal vein is going down. Contrast coming from the right renal vein is also going down. 
normally we see these flames of contrast agent going up in the normal situation. The fact that they are going down here tells us that the blood, which does not yet contain contrast medium, is coming in the inferior vena cava and going here between the two streams coming from the renal veins. How do we see this on the sectional images? That's the inferior vena cava without contrast medium above the level of the renal vein. And here comes the left renal vein, putting its contrast medium content into the cava downwards. And more strikingly, the dense contrast medium from the right renal vein, because it is very short and does not receive collaterals, goes downwards also in the inferior vena cava. So ultimately, in this um, image, we can see the three colors, the uh, gray of the blood from the left renal vein, the darker gray blood from the liver, and the very white blood coming from the right renal vein. In the normal situation, we see this appearance above the level of the renal veins, and here we see it below the level of the renal veins, telling us that the flow in the inferior vena cava is from up downwards. We have a couple of other features. In this case, we have cirrhosis, or let us say fibrosis. And uh, this is recognized by the irregularity of the outline of the liver and the widening of the fissures. We see also ascites and splenic enlargement. And there is a total of four liver lesions, three at the left lobe and one at segment five close to the gallbladder. The one in the right lobe is showing hypervascular enhancement on this single phase uh, CT because in fact it was a CT of the thorax and uh, hypodense or hypovascularization of uh, the lesions in the left lobe. Now we have two possibilities for these lesions. Either they are benign uh, shunting nodules as we see in all cases of uh, butt Chiari syndrome, whether it is due to a thrombosis or due to a membrane, or they are hepatocellular carcinomas because hepatocellular carcinoma is known to occur in this situation. And MRI gives us a better clue to this question because here uh, on the dynamic gadolinium enhanced images, we see clearly the enhancement on the early phase and the fast wash out with the capsular enhancement on the subsequent phases, which is typical of LIRAD5 hepatocellular carcinoma. That's the lesion in the right lobe. The same applies for the lesion in the left lobe. We see it in the pre-contrast. Then its enhancement is in fact more delayed than the right lobe lesions. It enhances on the um, second image after injection of the contrast medium, and we can see that the lesions are in fact three, and then they wash out. Ultrasound guided biopsy of the lesion close to the gallbladder has been done and proved hepatocellular carcinoma. Due to its better dynamicity and due to the more sensitivity of MRI to gadolinium compared to the sensitivity of CT to iodine containing contrast agent, we see the dynamic features of the uh, flow in the inferior vena cava with the flames of the renal arteries going down into the cava as we have seen them in CT and we see that this part of the cava is uh, filling subsequently uh, so it delineates for us the membrane from both sides which is less beautifully seen in CT except of course if it is done repeatedly as a triphasic or at least two phases of CT. 
So the diagnosis here is membranous occlusion of the inferior vena cava, superior to the hepatic veins with diffuse parenchymal liver disease and multiple hepatocellular carcinomas. Uh, this is a sad story of a routine chest X-ray done for uh, license renewal, which ended up in malignancy. This tells us that this uh, membranous occlusion of the inferior vena cava can be a, a silent killer. Uh, although, on the other hand, it is the easiest cause of hepatic outlet obstruction to treat far easier than the thrombosis and the venoocclusive disease and the rest of the um, entities because uh, with a simple percutaneous venoplasty the membrane can be opened and the patient will have a normal pattern of circulation. So our learning points are that the membranous occlusion of the inferior vena cava may remain silent until the diffuse parenchymal liver disease or even the hepatocellular carcinoma develop. The shape of the interface between the contrast enhanced blood superior to the membrane and the unenhanced blood inferior to it is diagnostic of the membranous occlusion together with the retrograde uh, flow of blood in the inferior vena cava, inferior to the membrane. Our next case is a female 22 years old with primary infertility and here we have the ultrasonography and the power doubler ultrasonography of the pelvis. Uh, 